Welcome to this video about Against the Storm. This is the Queen's Viceroy I Simulate. I explore different simulation games and share gameplay videos of those I like. Subscribe to my channel if you are also a simulation game lover. Continuing from our last episode, we have now built a trading post, and trader Sahilda has arrived. Let's see what she has brought. Once we build a trading post, traders visit regularly. They don't only sell goods, we can also buy cornerstones, blueprints, and sometimes reputation points from them. What's on offer is different every time, so we need a bit of luck to be able to get what we need from a trader. The trading currency is Ember. We can spend our 4 Embers to buy some goods, or we can sell goods to earn some Embers, or we can also trade some goods for other goods. If we are desperate, there's also the option to attack the trader. The game says the consequence is severe. I haven't tried it yet. Our settlement is not that desperate. And this timer here tells us how long the trader is going to stay in the settlement. We can trade one pack of crops and one pack of provisions. The rest we need to deliver later for an order. Trading these two packs bring us three roots. Actually, we should deliver this order to get another 10 embers. Not long ago, we picked a new order asking us to produce more packs of crops, and we need grains for this task. Let's see how much grain we can purchase from Sahilda. 40 grains will cost 1320 embers. We can give you 13 embers plus 4 locks of wood. Looks like a good deal. Trade! Another blueprint can be unlocked. This provisioner produces flour, which is required for our cookhouse to make biscuits. I'm placing the provisioner here, again close to the warehouse. Please make flour and packs of provisions. This building is more efficient in making packs of provisions. I should take this task over from our makeshift post. Flour is being made. I can ask the cookhouse to make biscuits. Humans and beavers will love them. The fifth year starts and we now have five reputation points. The forest hostility has reached level 1, meaning a minus 2 penalty to our global resolve. That's okay. So far, by providing good food and clothing, we managed to keep our villagers happy. But it's time we plan our second half. I want to build it here, so please cut down these trees. Our makeshift post is busy making packs of building materials for an order. We have another order asking for 20 more packs of crops. I need to assign one more worker to this building. On the other hand, our lumber mill is also very busy. We need a lot of planks so that the makeshift piles can make packs of building materials. We also need to make 10 packs of trade goods for another order. This is why I've assigned two beavers to work in this building. Different species prefer and are good at different types of work. Beavers are gifted woodworkers and enjoy engineering. The rotating circles indicate these two beavers are being above average productive. Let's take a look at our orders. Now we have 5 reputation points, meaning we need another 8 to succeed this settlement. 3 orders are ready to be delivered. This one is asking us to discover a dangerous glade, which we will. Doing so will also take off this one, which is about discovering 4 glades. I'm clearing up the space to place a second half for this order. And then this one, our makeshift post is working on these 20 packs of crops. To have 24 grids of farmland will take some time. Soon, we get to pick the remaining two orders. Hmm... Or these three are not easy. Fulfilling the village's leisure need 14 times means we first need a building to produce L, and then another building such as the Tarfin, where the villagers can go and enjoy the L produced. We don't have the necessary blueprints yet. Having 16 beavers in our settlement. We have 11 now, and it's not likely the next group of newcomers will contain 5 beavers. Getting 4 Asian tablets is even more difficult. They may be found in dangerous or forbidden glades. They may be. I'd pick the 16 beavers one, slightly easier, but I actually don't think we can complete this order. Next one, rolling needs fulfilled 14 times. Again, we need to produce the training gears, and then another building for villagers to roll. 16 lizards. We only have 9 now, so chance is quite slim. Last one is to discover 3 glades plus 1 dangerous glade. Okay, this is the most predictable one. Please build another plantation here and turn the nearby fertile soil into farmlands. Farmlands can only be built on fertile soil. And now we have 23! Bummer, just below was needed for the order. Trees are cleared and it's time to build a second hearth. Let me assign a lizard to be the firekeeper. After that, I'm moving some shelters over and placing four comfort decorations here. The objective is to get the second hearth upgraded like the first one, so that it gives us another two global resolve. We need tools to open the caches discovered earlier. 
you can get 10 tours by delivering this order. Please open this cache and take the 0.5 reputation points. The seven year starts and we welcome another two beavers to our settlements. That takes off another order. Now we have about seven and a half reputation points and five orders ready to be delivered. We can complete these settlements. I was hoping to complete these settlements before the end of the sixth year. I missed it by a bit this time. Looking back, I should have hand in the tools rewarding orders sooner so that I could open the caches sooner. Each of them contains 0.5 reputation points. Actually, we were fully capable to complete this before the seventh year started. Also, I should have cut into dangerous glades to reap more resources and rewards. Lessons learned. Next time. After we complete the settlements, we are back in this world map. The reason each settlement should not take more than 6 years is because we are working against a deadline, which you can see now at the bottom of the screen. Now, we are at the point in time labeled with our first settlement's name, Ignal. The target is to complete as many settlements as possible and venture as far as possible from the smoldering city before the end of the cycle marked by this symbol on the right. When a cycle ends, the blight storm hits and everybody needs to go back to the only place that is safe, the smoldering city. That's also where we can spend what we earn in the cycle to buy upgrades. Actually, we can also go there now. We have completed 4 deeds. Win a game on the Scarlet Orchard biome with at least 40 villages, zero villager dying, near the Royal Outpost modifier. This brings us to level 3, meaning we have access to more citadel upgrades. More buildings are available to us, given we can unlock the blueprint. There's an additional trader old falloff and 2 more cornerstones. That's about the deeds. And the upgrades. This one means increased village speed and another embarkation point. This one gives us 2% more burning duration for all types of fuel in the half. And we can choose stone or clay in addition before we embark. Let's pick this one. The previous settlement was in the Scarlet Orchard. I think I would pick a map in the Royal Woodlands as my second settlement. Now let me talk about a couple things I didn't get to in the last episode. With the upgrade we just purchased at the Smoldering City, we can spend our embarkation bonuses on stone or clay in addition. Under the summary page, we can see how many reputation points are required to succeed this settlement and how many impatience points the Queen has before her mercy runs out. The map size is medium. There is an average amount of fertile soil. We gain 12 mushrooms and 30 experience points after completing this settlement. And then the modifiers page. Gift of the woodlands, trees give more wood, which is great. In addition to wood, cutting down trees here may also give resin, plant fiber, and eggs. And here are the natural resources available for gathering in this map. I always pick wood and some food before I embark. After hitting the embark button, we can see the forest mysteries. What do we have this time? Gift of the woodlands, we know. Villages have a 35% chance of not consuming food during a break. Good. Plus 3 to berries production during drizzle seasons. Nice. 10 villages have a plus 1 boost to their resolve during drizzle seasons. Sweet. Looming darkness we always need to deal with. Minus 4 to global resolve during storm seasons. And the last one. 10 villages have a 20% chance of destroying the yield with each production cycle. That is only active when the forest hostility reaches 4. I'm pretty sure we won't get there. We didn't get to showcase a dangerous glade in the first settlement. Sorry about that. I will make sure I work on one in this settlement. Also, I should complete this within 6 years. That's something for our next episode.